Well, uh, today we have another uh, fun That's Classic episode, and we have a returning guest who has been terrific to the show, uh, Judy Norton from the Waltons. And uh, welcome, Judy. Thank you. So nice to be back. <laughs> oh, definitely. And, you know, this is a special episode. This is a special holiday episode of That's Classic, because we're going to look at the holiday episodes of the Waltons with Judy. But at the same time, she's got huge news. She just released a Christmas CD. And um, Judy, why don't you tell us what it's called and, uh, you know, how it all came about in the first place? Awesome. Well, yeah, well, thank you for thank you for asking. Um, it's hot off the presses. It's called Home for Christmas. It's a beautiful and cover, by the way. Thank you. This is a piece of it's literally it's a painting that a friend of mine, an artist friend, Paula Shapiro, um, had done. And I had seen it a, a number of months before. Um, and when I was trying, when I was looking for a cover, I just kept coming back to this, this image because I just think it's so beautiful. And so I contacted her and said, Hey, Paula, you know, what, what would you, could we, could we work something out for me to use this as the cover for my CD? And she was kind enough to allow me to do that. And wow. um, in exchange, I am very happy to promote her artwork, which is absolutely gorgeous. Um, so it just, it just seemed like the right fit, uh. You know, to me, I, I grew up in Southern California, so snow was not a part of my winter Christmas yeah. experience. But it's when I watch Christmas movies, I, I I always have this image of at some point spending a Christmas in a little, you know, cabin in the snowy woods, and you know, this yeah, is, yeah, yeah. You know, uh, so that's that's sort of even though it isn't my experience of being home for Christmas, it's yeah. the image in my mind and and that feeling. Uh, so it it just spoke to me. Well, uh, I, I listened to the CD and I, I thought it was beautiful. I mean, I'm not just saying that because you're on the show. I, I honestly, I thought you did just a terrific job. It's like, I kind of felt like, and I don't know if you were going for this or whatever, but it almost feels like, you know, sitting around the fireplace, having a hot chocolate, you know, you might have the family. I mean, it, it it totally sets you in that in that vibe, you know, and um, yeah, it was just it was just really I, I was I was very taken. I thought it was really beautiful. Thank you. Um, it sort of stemmed from I mean, doing a Christmas CD is something I've wanted to do forever, ever mm -hmm. since I started singing and you know, growing up, you know, you, you sing along with the radio, you sing along, uh, you know, Christmas carols are, are, again, a part of the season that I always relate to and I always loved yeah. having a chance to do. So I always thought it would be fun to do a Christmas CD. And during, during the whole lockdown, there were so many things that I couldn't do. Right. You know, I was supposed to be directing film. That didn't happen. You know, there were trips that got canceled. There were, you know, work just sort of shut down for all of us. Yeah. And so I started looking at, well, what can I do that, mm -hmm. you know, won't endanger anybody else's life or mine or get anybody sick or, you know, what was possible. And, and so I came back to this concept of a Christmas CD and I just wanted it to be, as you said, those, those memories from my whole life and what Christmas songs I associated with the holidays and some of my favorite movies of the holidays. And, mm -hmm. and I just wanted it to have that, that feel to it. So I, yeah, it was, it was my lockdown project and my producer, John Fresk, actually, I knew him from the West coast. Uh, he has produced all three of my CDs. Wow. He's now living in Prague in the Czech Republic. <laughs> oh my gosh. He married a lovely woman who lives there and ended up moving there. And, uh, but we have through, you know, technology is so amazing now. It, it mm -hmm. can drive us crazy at times, but it enables us to do so many things that weren't possible before. So you don't have to be in the same place. So he had me, he said, pick the songs and, you know, figure out the keys. So, you know, I'd, I'd sit around and I'd like sing acapella into my iPhone <laughs> oh, and, I, and I go, well, do I, do I like the sound of that key? And I don't really play piano, but I could figure out, all right, let me try this key. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's a little high. Let me try this. That's a little low. And so I just did that. And then I said, here, John, this is sort of the sound I'm, I think I'm going for. And I think this is the key that I'm singing in. Wow. Wow. And 
so he um, he took it from there and he did all of the arrangements and he played he's a beautiful piano player so he played all the piano and he did all of the samples and then we had some live uh, piano bass and drums were all recorded live um so the saxophone was recorded live that's um, amazing I think the flutes was recorded live so he did all the recording in the czech republic wow and wow. i did all of my vocal recording on the west coast yeah. so we found a studio and and both and at times when i went into the studio he'd be on zoom Oh, wow. And, and so we'd be able to have a little conversation with the engineer as we got started. And so he was, you know, paying it, tracking with all of it. And then the tracks would get sent to him. I'm like, well, what do you think? And should we add something or change something or redo something? And, okay, and then he that's created crazy. all those beautiful orchestrations. And, you know, so it was, it was like that. And, and my, the guy who did the mixing and mastering is in Portland, Oregon. And, and <laughs> Jeez. You know, so it's who also mastered my other two CDs. So I, it, there's just this team of people that I, I'm comfortable working with. And so it yeah. was, yeah. I get it. I get it. Yeah. So is it kind of a, I mean, honestly, <laughs> is it kind of when you look at that CD, is it kind of like a dream come true? Like, is it one of those moments for you? Yeah. I, I mean, it wasn't a business proposition, it was a labor of love, and which yeah. a lot of what I did during lockdown was. You know, starting my YouTube channel, it was an opportunity to interact with people. Yep. You know, our our fan base with the Waltons has just been incredibly loyal for fifty years. I, in, and, insanely, I mean, yeah. it's just something yeah. else. And you know, the show has been on for years and years in syndication and and on different channels. And I hear every time it comes goes off a channel, it's like. Why did that channel take it <laughs> right, off? Why did exactly. INSP stop running it? I'm like, I don't know. They didn't ask me. They didn't tell me. <laughs> right. They didn't call. You know, but Hallmark still got it. You know? Right. So I'm always. <laughs> so yeah. they're very, they're very cute. But you know, they think I, they think we know everything, which is very, very nice of them to think exactly that, I'm that omnipotent. But I don't. <laughs> right. You're <laughs> you like last to know me. on the list. Yeah, I get <laughs> yeah. you. I get you. Yeah. yeah. So. Um, what, you know, actually, just because you brought that up, I mean, we'll get to the holiday episodes for sure, just if, who's ever out there listening. Uh, but I wanted to say it's the 50th anniversary, as you said, and you just had a huge reunion at the Hollywood Museum in, in Los Angeles. Is that correct? Yes. Uh, um, we were able to, Warner Brothers was gracious enough to uh, allow them to have a number of items, an article, at least one article of clothing from some point um, that each character wore. They have Earl Hamner's original typewriter that he wrote episodes on. Wow. Um, they have Michael Learned's three Emmys that she won for playing um, Olivia Walton and wow. scripts and, and just diff various different memorabilia and th dolls and games and books and um, so it's a sweet little exhibit, and it was coordinated um, around Richard Thomas's schedule because Richard is on tour with To Kill a Mocking. Right, right, right. Yes, and so the show was going to be in L.A. for you know about three weeks, mm -hmm. and so uh, Richard was wonderful and was like, "Yes, I will. You know, I would love to attend, be part of it." And so they scheduled it while his tour was in Los Angeles and early enough in the day so that he could come and be part of it and then go and, as he said, have something to eat, have a little rest and then do a show. Right. Uh, so as, as I got, cause I don't live in LA um, mm -hmm. anymore, but uh, I'm close enough that when I heard about it, I said, yes, I would love to be there. I want to come and see the exhibit. I want to be with my, family. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Who would so yeah. who all attended? Who was who were all In the person? It was Richard, Michael, um, Eric Scott, who played Ben, Cami Kotler, who played Elizabeth, and me. We were the 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 family members who were there in person. John Walmsley was on Zoom from Cornwall, England, where he lives. That was a little tricky. The time it was just not the connection wasn't great. So poor John, you know, oh, he said he was bad. having trouble hearing. And then every time he tried to talk, it would freeze. And he, you know, so he, oh, a, lot of, oh, a lot of very awkward shots of John 
<laughs> yeah, right, exactly. exactly how you don't want to be frozen but yeah not exactly what you're looking it's for it's probably the middle of the night for him and then mary mcdonough who played aaron sent a lovely just video pre-recorded video message she wasn't able to come in from texas and uh, um david harper sent his best but wasn't able to come in uh so that was the in person and then there were a number of people who had done an episode or recurred oh um, wow yeah, uh, Keith Coogan, who was Jeffrey Burton in a later season, and um, Lee Purcell, who was the wing walker, and uh, Maeve Nutter, who played Bobby Bigelow, uh, Ivy Jones, who did two episodes. Wow. Uh, so there were so there were some, yeah, some really some fun. Ellen Gear was there, um, Will's daughter, and she did two episodes as well. And then there oh, were other celebrities who who came in just to support it. Oh, that's yeah. awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. I never knew that, by the way, that uh, Ellen Gear was in two episodes. Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah, she wow. was in, um, originally in the first season, the episode, The Ceremony with the Jewish family um, mm -hmm. that uh, came over because of the persecution that was already beginning in the late 30s in Germany. Yeah. Uh, so they came over uh, to escape that. Um, so she was the the mother in that family. And oh, wow. then in a later episode, she was the sister of a character named Sweet Billy, who when I, when my character was doing nursing rounds in the woods, in up in the mountain and stuff like that. And he was this wonderful, kind character that had some sort of a heart issue and ended up dying. But uh, she was the sister of of him. So two very different roles. And, you know, she's just brilliant. Wow. Interesting. Very interesting. So um, let's talk about a couple of these episodes, by hey, the way. Um, so, I remember. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I know. I know. It kind of puts you, I think people think like, oh, we do this big prep for this, but we're not. This is on the fly, folks. So um, hey. there we go. Um, I, the, the first one I wanted to bring up was season five, The Best Christmas. Mm -hmm. um, what, you know, I, I mean, when I think of that episode, I think of like, you know, going to the hospital and all that stuff. What, 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 uh, what memories do you have of that episode? And and uh, any any insight or any any thoughts? Anything that took place then? Um, I I really liked that Christmas episode because it it really centered around the family. Um, everybody had something that was integral to the story that involved their character. But it really, beyond the family, it was about the community. And it was really, to me, about the spirit of Christmas. And that, you know, here they were trying to pull everybody together, all the family together for Christmas. And people ended up scattered all over. Mary Ellen and Kurt were going to go to his family's house, but um, that didn't happen. And, and then Fanny Tatum, the opera, the phone operator, had her, I think, niece or something. And they crashed into Drusilla's pond and had to be rescued. And oh God, I forgot about that. You know, a tree branch fell through the roof of the church. And so uh, members of the community were up there trying to repair the church roof on Christmas Eve so that they could have Christmas services. And so it was just, so we had John Ritter and we had um, Sheila Allen who played Fanny Tatum, who was the wife of Erwin Allen, who did all those amazing disaster oh movies. my gosh i totally yeah. forgot about that yeah yeah so uh and i think verdi uh, verdi grant and and harley um foster that i think they were in it and 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 were helping in the rescue and so it was it was just everybody kind of coming together and but not quite in the way it wasn't like oh we're all going to gather and we're just going to have a uh celebrate christmas eve that it didn't go that way because people were involved in things that were more important at that moment and yet to me embodied you know what the spirit of christmas and what in my opinion how we should operate all year round which is mm -hmm. to be there for each other and to um you know help our neighbors and our community and you know yeah 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 i so i feel like I, a I lot of the <laughs> yeah a lot of the holiday episodes that i i kind of picked it the Waltons never really, it never took like a direct approach. It wasn't like, hey, let's all get the decorations and we're doing the tree. It was always like something is going on. I mean, it's really an interesting approach to like a, you know, a holiday episode. It was, it was interesting that way. I, another one that came in was, um, uh, what is it? Day of Infamy. 
Oh yeah, um, from a nice uh, light Christmas one. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. You know, like I said, I mean, it's like the Waltons takes like a totally different direction. I mean, it's kind of heavy with Pearl Harbor yeah. and the whole whole bit. Um, what were your yeah. feelings about Day of Infamy? What uh, oh. what what comes back? I, I mean, it was always. I think a bit of a stunner when somebody that the audience was very familiar with died, yeah. like Kurt, you know, to, to kill him at Pearl Harbor, you know, mm -hmm. uh, people, people I think had a similar reaction when they killed off GW Haynes mm -hmm. in the war. Um, so it's like, it, it really brings it close to home and close to the, the family. Um, so that I just, I remember, just these heartbreaking moments of it actually in filming the scenes um when jim bob when david harper arrives with the telegram for me it was just like there was something about the just simple way in which he delivered that information and that there was nothing dramatic about it in a, in a sense it wasn't overplayed it wasn't acted it was just this this honest moment that just broke my heart and then yeah. of course you know ellen bringing out the letter that kurt wrote and ralph you know john walton reading this letter that's like uh can anybody get through this with a dry eye yeah i mean you know, seriously he, that is a really heavy episode yeah yeah there, there wasn't a lot of acting going on there it wasn't really necessary it was just like listen to this and and let it affect you because you couldn't not be affected by it. It was just so, you know, heartbreaking. But Wait. again, there was Verdi who, you know, who found out that her son was fine. Thank right. goodness. And, and um, you know, that people, people listening to that radio broadcast, um, you know, it just so evoked a time when I think our entire nation was focused on one single thing and experiencing a moment together. I think the only thing I can think of since then is probably the World Trade Center, you know, the, right. the towers going down that period in our more recent history, I think pulled, you know, drew everybody together in a moment as a nation. And I think, you know, Pearl Harbor was like that. And so I Definitely. think it, it set that tone there of a turning point in right. the history of this this country i think even as that episode is on and, and how heavy it is if i and i may not recall this correctly but i think they're still in there and i don't remember who was setting it up but i think you were actually still setting up the tree and yes and things yeah yes because i said i wanted i still wanted them to get the tree i wanted to try to be doing things that were normal right and, um I mean, we, we each have our own way of how we deal with grief. And so for her, which I think was very much Mary Ellen, that it, it's like, you got to move forward, you know, mm -hmm. and how do you do that? How do you, how do you not just focus on waiting and not knowing, and then the, you know, the impact of the grief, but experience the grief, but start taking those those steps forward mm -hmm. because you have to you're still there and you have to find a way past it so um yeah and in fact i think at one point i came downstairs singing you know the beginning of deck the halls or something as yeah trying to get everybody to um to know that it was okay let's feeling i guess that 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 character needed to set the tone. Everybody was waiting to see how Mary Ellen was going to react and wanting to adjust accordingly. And so when she came in, you know, saying, okay, we're doing Christmas. Everybody took that, took that lead and, and went, okay, good. Then we're doing this. We're supporting you in that way. It's the rally cry. Yeah. 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 Did, yeah. um, you know, actually it's interesting. I was just thinking about that too. As far as the, the, you know, as you said, you kind of uh, were singing Deck the Halls. Were, did, 
did you sing in any of the other episodes? Because it's really funny. I, I don't. I mean, all and I all I did with that was you know come in with the first couple of lines. But, yeah, um, yeah. I mean, it was really. Uh, John Walmsley was the one who did all the music, uh, and early. I remember in in some early episode when there was something to do with singing and somebody, one of the other siblings went, oh, you know, no, forget it, Mary Ellen, you sing, you, you croak like a frog. And so it was sort of very early uh, implied that Mary Ellen didn't sing and couldn't sing. Oh my um, gosh. So it was never a story point for my character. And, and that makes sense. There was no reason for Mary Ellen particularly to be to be a singer. But of course we all sang. We sang in church, we sang it. Well, yeah. At, you know, around the Christmas tree, we sang, but those were all kind of grouped together. So I didn't, I never soloed. <laughs> yeah, no, I got gotcha. you. It's just interesting. I just, I, I totally thought about that. The, um, by the way, going back to the, uh, your CD, the songs that you picked, was it hard to narrow it down to just those Christmas songs? Or did you have others that you're like, oh, I really wanted to do that, but. There were so many uh, that I love. And there were ones that I just, I forgot about even. Mm -hmm. and, and now as I'm back into the holiday season, it's like, oh, I love that song. Why didn't I, why didn't I think of that one? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I wanted to, um, I wanted intentionally to keep it sort of secular um, as opposed mm -hmm. to, you know, doing um, a number of the more religious songs, which are absolutely gorgeous. But sure. um, I just, I kind of wanted to keep it accessible without making any kind of a statement. Now, granted, not everybody celebrates Christmas, you know, oh, sure, but of course. I felt that things like jingle bells are kind of like they're not they're not exclusive. Not you know, so all. that was a little bit of, of my thought on it. And I've had some people ask me about that because of course on the Waltons, you know, the family was. Um, we did, you know, was far more outwardly religious and stuff like that. So, um, but we had a very diverse group even within our cast. So it felt like, you know, that was something we represented, but, and I don't think that is our only fan base either. So I just kind of, you know, we did. Yeah. So I think it, it was a little bit of, of that for me. Yeah. Yeah. And we're, by the way, before I forget, uh, where can the fans go to, to buy the, your CD? Uh, well, it, for people who stream, it is available on pretty much any streaming platform. So whether that's Apple Music or iTunes or um, Spotify or Pandora, I think it's available pretty much any streaming platform. Okay. Um, and then physical copies are only available through my website, which is judynorton.com. So you go there. I personally sign everything. If you want it signed specifically to someone, I think there's a place, some notes or something where you can make a note, please sign it to George or whatever. Um, mm -hmm. Otherwise, I just sign it because I don't know if it's a gift or for the person, you know, and I don't want to, Mary orders it, but she orders it for Dave and I mm -hmm. sign it, dear Mary, thank you. <laughs> you know? yeah, right, exactly. She's like, you I can't give it that. to him now. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's cool though, that you sign them uh, if yeah. they order through the uh, your website, judynorton.com. Yeah, so those are those are the physical copies. So I know a lot, a lot of us don't rarely, we rarely play physical copies anymore, but someone actually asked me if I had it on vinyl. No, we did not, <laughs> we did not produce any vinyl. <laughs> Well, it is nice in the CD form because of that cover. I mean, that yeah. that is beautiful too. And then you, obviously you have the, you know, everything's there, which is which yeah. is kind of nice. And then the inside artwork was actually a photo that my husband took. Really? Um, yeah, it, it's actually kind of the person who did my lovely graphics um, just got got very clever with um, with how she used it. And in fact, the actual CD also has a, a piece of, that point said it. Okay, that's uh, pretty cool. There is a wonderful Christmas market in Cambria, California. And I, for it, it, two or three different occasions at the holidays, my brother and his family and my husband and I, you know, would go to this fun market and part of, and it's all lit up and there's vendors and it's, you know, it's just quite charming. And there's a, a, a fabulous nursery 
at as part of the um the path yeah and they they just it's decorated great and there were all these these just sort of settings that you just you, know, you just want to take a picture of. So my husband took a, a number of pictures. And again, when I was looking for artwork, I went, I love that shot too. So. <laughs> oh, did that work out great? Yeah. So it, it all worked. <laughs> That's so personal. And Cambria, gosh, is such a cute little town. I've been there many times. I just love that. Love that area of California. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Okay. Let's go to another episode. Here we okay. go. Put Putting Judy Norton on the spot here. Um, the spirit. Mm -hmm. uh, from season eight with uh, the prisoners of war uh, or the prisoner of war, I guess it is. Um, how did you feel about that episode? What, uh, any, any, any memories, any thoughts come back on that? Uh, I don't particularly remember filming it, uh, but when mm -hmm. I watched it again, I think last year, uh, it's a sleeper. You know, I was kind of mm -hmm. like, I don't really remember this episode, but I was watching it and I was, I was so charmed by it. I thought it was so poignant. Uh, you know, here we are now in in wartime, and right. this sort of myster slightly mysterious character. We don't know what his story is. We don't know what's going on. But um, you know, there is a. I think it's isn't it Jeffrey? It's it's you know Keith Keith. I, I think you're correct. Character. Yes. Yeah, mm -hmm. that has been visiting with him in the woods where he's hiding out and and on the run and he you know convinces him to come that it'll be okay that he can invite him and everybody in the family thinks that this is an imaginary friend and then right. he shows up and you know just another case of somebody who comes into contact with the family whose life path changes because of that interaction because of because of their acceptance of people mm -hmm. you know they don't mm -hmm. even you know even sometimes when there'd be some early judgment or 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 distrust that they still gave people the benefit of the doubt they didn't decide make any decisions and and they allowed the situation to um they they were willing to have their mind changed and mm -hmm. You know they go through a lot there and but they're also not ready to let him let him off the hook so, right right i right. mean i like that too that they didn't say well okay we're going to help you escape <laughs> right right like, you know no recognizing that well then you're going to spend your life on the run mm -hmm. um and i thought it was an interesting thing because i did not no, I mean, I wasn't alive during the war. I didn't know that they actually had German prisoner of war camps in the States. I didn't either, by the way. I didn't know that either. That was quite yeah. shocking. Yeah. I mean, I knew about the Japanese internment camps. You right. Know, but not not that. So I was like, wow, that's, you know, another piece of history that I learned doing the show. Yeah, I don't think most people even uh, still know that. But the the other aspect of that episode, and I get them, I get them uh, sometimes confused. I mix the two up. So if I'm wrong on this, but I thought that they also told the the story of like Saint Nicholas in that episode. I thought that was the one where they yeah, yeah. they did. I think he told that story. Right, right, yeah. yeah. I, yeah. I think that's how they brought that, the, you know, the Christmas vibe back in there, which was kind of cool that they they got yeah. that across, by the way, too. Kind of a neat, you know, like, is it is it a real, you know, is that a real, you know, thing or not, you know, and then you've got him in the woods and is he real or isn't he, but he is, you know, kind of, kind of cool little moment there. Yeah, um, yeah pretty wild. What about uh, the children's carol mm -hmm. from season oh, yeah, six? Yeah, the one that I was, I was half the time I call it the Christmas Carol. And then I'm like, yeah, it's like, I, you want the, to, yeah. The children's, the Christmas. Yeah. Um, so sweet. Now, I mean, most, a lot of the fans know that the little boy, Pip, is actually Cammy Cotler's brother. Oh my, see, so, I didn't know that. Yeah. Whoa. That, that's Jeffrey, Jeffrey Cotler. Oh my um, gosh, I didn't even put that together. That's yeah. so funny. And um, the, the girl who played his, the sister, whose name I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm she is actually on a Sally Boyden. She is Australian. Mm -hmm. And evidently, 
uh, quite a singer. She had, you know, you know she's a recording artist, uh, sure, or was already, but, you know, I know oh she gosh. and Cammie have sort of stayed in contact. I, I haven't talked to Sally in, in ages. Um, but, yeah, I mean, another, you know, they. I liked that when we got into the war, they didn't ignore the war just because it was Christmas. I mean, in right. some cases, some of the brothers weren't weren't around, but that they incorporated aspects of what was going on just at that time period within a Christmas episode. Yeah. Uh, so there was an opportunity to share a story, you know, with them. And the my, my mother's from England, so she grew up during the war, and and so oh, the wow. whole thing of the bomb, the bombing. She didn't live in London, but they had. She lived in um, uh, Nottingham area, and they were near um, the Rolls Royce factory that produced that built the engines for the planes. Oh my God! So uh, she said they were always trying to bomb that that factory. Oh, and I'm so sure. And I think air, you know, they had the big balloons over top of it to try to disguise it. And so I guess my grandfather was, they had a, a committee of, of people, of guys who uh, were kind of on, on bomb lookout, you know, in the sense that, cause they would sometimes land, but not detonate. Oh my so, gosh. So there was that whole thing of, of making sure that that anything that was not detonated could be dealt with safely. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um, so he was part of that committee, and you know, so she grew up with the blackouts and the and you know and the the air raids. And, oh my gosh! Um, so I was I was not unfamiliar with that concept, although um, the two children were supposed to have been from London. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. they were, and as a lot of families were, they were separated and sent, they sent the children away to try and keep them safe. So, you know, you just feel for these children who, you know, no idea if their parents are alive and oh, no, no, shipped no, no, off someplace and, you know, and it's Christmas and, you know, who right. do you trust and, you uh -huh. know. Oh. Yeah, that's just, that's just, that's pretty heavy. Wow. Talk about having it hit home for yeah. you. Jeez. Yeah. But I, didn't, then, I didn't realize, you know, then the happy ending where they actually, because Jim Bob has built a wireless radio of some sort, um, and that he's been talking to someone in London, you know, yeah. via this, this radio and they're able, and she's able to track down their, you know, their mom. So it's really, yeah, that's pretty cool. That's yeah. Pretty so cool. a very sweet, yeah. happy ending in that case. And of course the Baldwin sisters who were the ones who were taking in the children right exactly they're, they're always fun you know so a little a little recipe to celebrate the holidays when yeah, right, right. <laughs> <laughs> so you know going going back to your cd um how long did you know from inception i guess where you actually got serious about it you know yes i, I mean i realize that you, this is something you've thought about for a long time went from like inception of i'm gonna do this to you actually have a physical cd in your hand how much time went by it was a couple of years. I, wow. I had hoped to have it done um, Christmas of 2021. Mm -hmm. And around about September, October, there was there were long periods where nothing happened. I'd, you know, I'd given the information, I'd talked to John and then I'd sent him information and then I didn't hear anything for ages. You know, and I was, I wow. thought, well, is he wow. working on it? Is he busy? What's going on? And then I went, well, okay, maybe, maybe he doesn't have time to do this or it's going to be too, you know, so I was kind of, should I go a different path? Should I work with somebody else? Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden, you know, I heard from him and then he was, um, he said, okay, we're going to, you know, I'm going to get in the studio and record these. And this was like about September. And I went, there's no way that this can be ready for this. No, year. No, no, you know, you might be able to get, do lovely recordings and stuff, but I said, I need time with these arrangements, you know, I, I'm not, I won't be ready in two weeks to turn around and get in the studio and record all the vocals and rush through all of that. So we agreed. And with the Christmas, it's not like you say, well, we'll release it in exactly no, instead, no, of, no, no, no. instead of November. <laughs> right. So it's like, well, we either, if we don't have time to do it here, then we need to wait until 2022. So it, it was longer than it needed to be, but you know, when the tracks were ready, then I 
I could spend as much time as I wanted before I went, all right, let's go in the studio just so that I was really comfortable with it and wasn't going to waste a lot of time. Mm -hmm. It goes how, you know? Yeah, right. Because <laughs> it's like right. I, get sent, I get sent a music track and I'm, fortunately, <laughs> he always sent like vocal guides because I'm like, I don't know how much of an intro. I don't know when the, I don't know where the instrument. Good point. Are. Good point. Yeah. Just a track. <laughs> yeah, right. That's tough. That's really tough. Yeah. So, hey. yeah. Did you want to, um, or are, are there any thoughts of like performing this live at any point? Um, I, I mean, I could, I don't know that, uh, there's no specific plan for it. I did mm -hmm. do, there was a push for me to have it ready by the beginning of November, not just because it makes sense to, for sure. that to be when it releases, but I was going back to North Carolina to do a couple of concerts. And so I wanted to have it there and make it available for people there. And I did a couple of the songs from it in that concert. Oh, wow. So, yeah. Wow. Where yeah. did you, why don't you just tell us a little something about that? Like, where did you perform? That's I was in cool. um, Pinehurst, North Carolina. It's a small, uh, major golf Mecca. <laughs> Lots yeah, of yeah. I've heard of it actually. Yeah. I really have. Yeah. I think there's a huge uh, tournament, the Pinehurst. Yeah, something. I, yeah, I, don't I think know. the PGA is is it has a tournament next year that, or I, I think next year that's going to be played. Sounds here. right. Big yeah, wins. pretty famous golf spot. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and and just I mean, there's a little downtown area that is so charming. It's like something out of a out of a Hallmark movie or a Walton's, you know, episode. It's just so charming. It's um, perfect for you to perform in. My God. Yeah. Uh, we use, we were at the um, Sunrise Theater in kind of on the main street of, of, of Pinehurst. And uh, yeah, that was, you know, that was somebody else I've worked with. Um, uh, Ed Martell, who uh, he's a, another fabulous piano player. And he had a couple times when I was two, three times when I was doing concerts, he was the person who played for me, you know, so mm -hmm. we were put the show together and go out. So he had lived in LA and then yeah. about the same time, my husband and I moved out of LA, he and his wife moved out of LA and they, she has family in that area of North Carolina. So they moved back there. So I don't know, earlier in the year, um, you know, we'd kind of gotten back in touch, found out we both moved and then he said, yeah, I've been hooking up with different musicians, different musicians and different people down here. You know, there's a lot going on in the music thing. And wow. we're looking at doing some, some concerts. And so we were floating, kicking around names of people who, you know, might be a good fit for this area. And your name garnered the most interest of people. Go, yeah, yeah. Let, you know, that would interest us. I totally would believe that. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, so we... I think around September or something like that, or you know, August, September, we locked in these dates in November because my husband and I went to France for two weeks in October. So it's like, can't do October because, you know. It's too much, yeah. Yeah, I wouldn't have time to go and do this. And, you know, and then I don't want to do it right after because I won't be singing for two weeks. While right, France, you know? right, exactly. When you're in preparation for a concert, that's going to be, <laughs> you know, a couple yeah. of hours. <laughs> it's like right. it, it's a workout. Yeah. It's a physical oh. workout. So oh, you need sure. to be vocally prepared. So anyway, so I went we we picked November and I said, well that works great because my CD is going to be released. And mm -hmm. so there you go. Wow. Pretty cool. Um yeah. I I gotta put in uh going back to the episodes, I have yeah. to put in the homecoming. I mean that's just kind of like yeah. just logical. Um, what are your recollections or your feelings about the homecoming and, and, um, you know, the homecoming will always be very, very special. You know, it was, it's what launched the whole thing. I mean, right. originally it was just meant to be a Christmas TV movie special, just a mm -hmm. one-off. So because of that, um, we weren't shooting a pilot we were shooting a TV movie. Mm -hmm. um, we had five weeks to shoot it, which yeah, is big amazing. difference. When we did two hour specials for the Waltons, we had 15, you know, 13, 14 days. God, that's amazing. As opposed to, you know, whatever, 28 or 30 days that we had for mm -hmm. the homecoming. 
Um, and so it gave us, it really gave us time to bond, to gel, to, you know, to really find all of it. We had more time for, to rehearse things that needed to be rehearsed. And um, yeah, I mean, it was just, it was just such fun. We spent four weeks in LA at CBS studios. And then we spent a week in Jackson Hole, Wyoming, which oh, was great. my first time out of California, my first time filming on location, my first time really being in the snow. I mean, we'd been to the local mountains. Oh, wow, there's the snow. Yeah. Um, but to spend a week in the Teton Mountains, you know. <laughs> yeah. That's, and that is, yeah, that's magic. Yeah. I don't know how much of, I mean, yes, we were working, but it was just everything, the work, everything was fun, except the, except being frozen yeah when we had yeah, we yeah. the exterior scene with the missionary lady and we shot that at night and it was wow. very cold and we were freezing we're all these little <laughs> southern california kids <laughs> and poor mary mcdonough her character erin wasn't even wearing boots she just had on like regular shoes and socks <laughs> oh, and our coats weren't really that warm i mean it was the depression we looked like we looked like we were in the depression in that. I mean, right. Um, we didn't, you know, the clothes didn't really fit. They were, they looked like hand-me-downs or like we've had, had to wear them too long, had to make them last too many years. And and I really liked that about that, the authenticity of that field. Yeah. It. And, you know, working with Patricia Neal, you know. Oh, come on. Yeah. And, um, and, you know, there were just, there were there were cast people that were just such a Cleavon Little, I, yeah, uh, William Wyndham, um, top just top, yeah, actors. yeah, and then of course all the people and Edgar Bergen, you know the 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 core the kids Richard Thomas and Ellen Corby all came on then to the series, but um, right. they recast Patricia Neal and Andrew Duggan as the parents, and mm -hmm. of course Will Gear replaced Edgar Bergen. I'm not sure of the reasons for any of that, other than I believe with Patricia Neal, they were concerned that her health might be, might not be up to doing the grueling schedule of a series. I think you're uh, correct. I think yeah. in case I interviewed Michael, uh, Michael Lerner as well. And she, she commented that she was quite surprised. Uh, she thought it was that too, by the way, but I don't know if she's ever told you this story, but apparently Patricia Neal came up to her in New York. Um, and she said, you know, you know, because Michael is just a sweetheart. And she was like, oh my gosh, I just got to tell you, you know, <laughs> sorry. You know, I mean, it's been great for me, but I mean, I really, you know, feel whatever. And Patricia Neal said, they never even called me. Yeah. I mean, yeah. wow. I, wow. I, I, I did hear that, that, you know, everyone assumed that Patricia Neal had turned it down and she right. said they never asked. Yeah, yeah. You know, that she would have done it. Yeah, somebody of that stamina. I mean, things happen for a reason and all yeah. worked out, but still, yeah, isn't that crazy? It's yeah. just nuts. I, I mean, it's two very different things. And I think they were both fabulous in the role. I mean, I can't imagine anybody else but Ralph and Michael oh. in the series. And yet yeah. I love Patricia's portrayal. And I think there was a Michael... Um, now, Michael had the opportunity because of the length of the series to find more softness in Olivia, mm -hmm. um, you know, with the homecoming being really all about one evening and the concern of Olivia about right. is John going to make it back and the worry and everything. There wasn't a lot of room in there for her to be soft. Yeah, very true. Um, very true. The way it was written and... Um, you know, so that was a different portrayal of a woman. You really felt the depression in the homecoming. Oh, big time. Yeah. 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 You know, all, all the aspects of it. There was, there was no feel of, oh, we're doing a TV show here. There was nothing uh, pretty or, um, you know, it was very shadowed. It was, you just really had a wonderful feel of all of that. And, and a woman who lived in a harsh environment in, in during a harsh time. I really felt that from Patricia Neal in, in there, which I just think so set the tone. And I think all of that is, has to be such a huge part of why the series was even given the opportunity to go. 
you're oh totally totally well said yeah you know. so we That's all true. benefited from that um but yeah to have five weeks to hang out and play and work and wow. you know bond and yeah yeah I was so i was crushed when it was over i was when the airplane because we were chartered a plane to fly to jackson hole and so then we it was like a prop plane you know oh yeah <laughs> but a charter nothing nothing fancy you know we had little box lunches on the plane <laughs> casting through all flew up there and <laughs> that's pretty um, cool and, and when we flew back to wherever we probably burbank airport or something like that with the charter and landed and i was just like running around crying oh i'm gonna miss everybody i mean i thought <laughs> they'd never see him again and i was heartbroken oh, and <laughs> oh my gosh little, little did, did you know. know your whole life yeah. was about to change exactly exactly yeah. isn't that crazy <laughs> Yeah. Um, well, I'll tell you what, I, I, let's go back to the CD. Um, so the songs that you did pick, uh, when, which, which I don't know if, uh, when you take a look at them, which ones for you, I know that they're all special to you. You wouldn't have picked them if they weren't, but which ones kind of are like standouts for you personally that you really, really love? Um, I love have yourself a merry little Christmas. Um, it, yeah. I love the movie meet me in St. Louis. Oh yeah. Judy Garland singing to Margaret O'Brien. We, um, in the nineties, there was a Christmas CD that was done by the Walton cast that John I... Walmsley produced a Walton what? Christmas together again. Yes. It was very short lived because the record label went out, you know, they went under. And so I think the assets of that went under control of something else. So oh. it never got the kind of release it needed. You can still I think find it sometimes like on eBay or something. Right. Um, it's a really, really sweet CD and it's all of the cast. Uh, John wrote some songs for it. He did all the producing and arranging on it. Wow. Um, and it is all the cast singing and uh, Richard Thomas recites uh, a visit from St. Nicholas. Oh, that's um, awesome. And Ralph and Michael do a adorable little duet about all I want for Christmas is you as oh you my know. gosh and we, it was all in character so it was all it was the Waltons sharing a Christmas thing and so there's there's little dialogue there's laughter Earl Hamner does an introduction at the beginning of the CD it ends with I mean they wow. use the theme song there's a song that John wrote called good night that he and I sang as a duet at the end um, what so a shame. it's just really, really sweet. And uh, yeah. what's interesting is that during the course of the series, there was an album on vinyl <laughs> uh, that, was done <laughs> that was supposedly a Walton Christmas. Will Gear, I think was involved in it, but none of the rest of us it's, I mean, it's it, what we heard was, yeah, they, they got a bunch of studio singers and told them to sing bad. It's like, they could have gotten us in there to sing bad. <laughs> <laughs> right. Exactly. <laughs> so it was supposed to be us, but none of us were asked to do it. Oh, is that bizarre? Yeah, I mean, and it's a seriously. picture, you know, of the family on the cover sitting at the, at the, at, um, in the kitchen or, you know, around the, or standing, you know, it was one of our publicity shots with the, oh, the, that's you know, terrible that they so, did that. Yeah. Oh, wow. So that was a little, you know, <laughs> yeah little hurt by that <laughs> i think i would be too i think the fans would be a little hurt whoever bought that yeah like, i don't what? know that i don't remember if the um if the thing actually said that it wasn't us but wow I, and i don't remember anything about it because i think i maybe listened to it once and then went well <laughs> yeah exactly exactly <laughs> it's not us so the, so it was fun to do the one in in the 90s when it really was us yeah. Um, and that was one of the songs. That's a long way to answer why. Ah, have that's okay. But that was on it. And there were some other songs like Sleigh Ride was on that, which I, you know, thought was a lot of fun. And so trying to find a mix of, because I love a lot of the Christmas ballads. They're just yeah. so beautiful. You know, um, the Christmas song, Chestnuts Roasting on an Open Fire. Oh, come on. Classics. You know, Nat King Cole, come on. You know, yeah. Velvet. Just, yeah. Right. Um, so a lot of those white Christmas because white Christmas is one of my favorite, favorite Christmas movies. And even Me though too. it's not originally from white Christmas, everybody relates to that movie with that song. 
Right. Uh, but then I was like, oh, well, I need to pick some songs that are, I can't do <laughs> 12 ballads. <laughs> right, right, right. So what up tempos do I like? And um, so, you know, finding up tempos that, that I liked and, and were, and were fun. And uh, I know there was always the big question of public domain when we did the, um, the Walton one, they did choose some things that were public domain, so they didn't have to pay the licensing. And, oh, I believe it. But um, Jingle Bells is the only one that's in public domain on mine. I just, when I was looking at it, I'm like, well, if they're not, they're not, and I'll pay the licensing. You know, right. these are the songs I want to sing. <laughs> you know, I'm happy to support other artists as well. <laughs> yeah, exactly, so, exactly. Yeah. Well, that's that's really cool. So uh, just to, yeah, to... I, cause I, I won't keep you any longer. I think, I think you've been incredible as always. I mean, anybody that's, that's heard any of the other interviews that we've had, we had one that you talked about just the Waltons on that's classic. Then the second one was all the fan questions that were sent in. Yeah, yeah. And then there's this one, you have just been so terrific in, in giving like just oh. the information and the, the, um, being so genuine. So no, I, I really, really appreciate it. So just, just once again, cause I know people go, could you just, you know, tell me what, um, where can they find it again? Where can they find the CD? Um, and if, can they get it before Christmas? If you sign, you know, can you sign them before then? Can you kind of explain? Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to at first, uh, the first inflow of orders, I was really crazy. I was like, oh, I'm going to release this right before I go do this concert and it'll be great. <laughs> and I was so excited because there was a big push because my website wasn't working and I wanted oh. to be able to go to my website and order, but uh, my fault, but there were some issues with the website and, and it wasn't working. And so I had to keep delaying. And so finally, right before I left, I'm like, oh, it's working and everybody can go order. And I went, oh, my job is done. Well, duh, I wasn't thinking now I have all these orders. That I need <laughs> exactly. To and I'm yeah. in North Carolina and I'm in, you know, doing the Hollywood museum. So you know, there was a point there where I was like way behind and I'm like, I do like 75 a day and I'd be like, and I'm packing them up and I'm labeling them and I'm- Yeah, you're to, doing that. I was just going to say, I'm doing I don't all, think people realize you're to. packing them up. Yeah. Because I have to sign them. So, yeah. uh, and then people would be going, where's my CD? I ordered it like, you know, 10 days ago. I'm like, I'm <laughs> right. so sorry. I'm so sorry. <laughs> you know, I literally made an announcement on my YouTube channel. And I'm, I'm like, please, you know, don't worry. It's, you know, there was a little delay because- I'm having to do all this and then I won't even go into what happened with the post office and trying to figure all that out. <laughs> oh, but, you know, at this time of year to walk in and go, hi, I need to make. <laughs> oh, I mean, seriously. So I, I, I figured out some slightly easier options, but anyway, um, so if it is, but now I'm, I'm staying on it every day. So I, I handle each orders that come in. They usually go out, you know, within one or two days. So if, if, if you're, in the States, you should get it within about five days. Um, so within a week of ordering, it should be there, maybe sooner, depending on where you are and how many how many pony carts have to transfer to get to where you are yeah. if you're very yeah. remote. Um, if you are out of the country, it'll be whatever it is, particularly as we get into the holiday season, because those I do need to go and stand at the counter and let the guy spend five minutes on each one filling out paperwork. And I have to fill oh. out paperwork. Oh, that's it. crazy. Seriously. So it, it is a little crazy, but, um, but you know, I am, um, I'm eating the cost on shipping those internationally wow. because there's just, it costs more to ship than to get the CD. But, you know, I don't want to make that you know, other people's problems. So um, I appreciate people wanting the CD. If you want it digitally, if you're a digital person, that's simple. You can go on right now and, mm -hmm. and do that. Um, but yes, the personally signed ones, you know, but closer it gets to Christmas, the more, you know, busy the post office gets, obviously. So there might be a I get long, it. But who knows, you know. But, and if they want it personally signed to someone, not just, you know, signed Judy Norton, they need to send you a little note or something, huh? Um, said, well, within the this. website, there's evidently, I think there's a place where it says notes or something like that. Okay. Um, some I, I haven't really gone in to figure it out myself, but I get a lot of notes from people if mm -hmm. they want it or they're ordering multiple ones as gifts, does mm -hmm. make great stocking stuffers. Um, oh, yeah. So, uh, yeah, then they might say a oh, one CD to this person, one CD to this person. And I do look for those notes if they exist. I do 
I do follow those instructions. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, yeah. Very cool. I got to say, I mean, if there was ever a situation where someone is being as sincere of, of saying this is a labor of love, this is it. I'm sorry. You're going to the post office, you're boxing it, you're doing all that. Give me a break. That is, it, it doesn't get more sincere. I know Cami Kotler's doing that with Christmas ornaments right now. And I was talking to her and she uh, goes, yeah, you know, I'll, I'll do them as long as I'm having fun. But when I'm done, you know, if that'll be it, I'll be... <laughs> Oh my gosh, that is so. Yes, hysterical. a good part of my day is it deals with managing the CDs, managing my YouTube channel, trying to answer comments, trying to keep up on anybody who's got an issue oh, yeah. with the CDs. <laughs> oh yeah, totally. Nobody's, it wouldn't it wouldn't play on her system. I'm like, oh shoot! So I'm trying to contact the person who you know actually man, you know replicated it to oh, go. Oh my god! Reason this shouldn't play or should i just be you know sending her a new one what's the deal and then she said oh i talked to the manufacturer and they got it sorted out so you know i'm really <laughs> trying my best to <laughs> right. to be attentive and you know <laughs> well you do a great I just job keep hoping i'm not transposing a bunch of numbers and, and zip codes and <laughs> Oh my god! I'm trying to double check. When I start going blurry and I'm like, I have no idea what I just did. I'm like, I'm stop <laughs> this well, could end up anywhere. <laughs> I love, I love it. I love that you're doing it. I, I'm sure the fans are really appreciative. And I, and anybody that's watching this, I mean, if you know, if if they have any any level of enjoying you, you know, and and enjoying the way you say, my gosh, they they should get this. So um, I hope they do. But um, anyway. Thanks a bunch. And you know, once again, your channel, um, your your own behind the scenes, Judy Norton behind the scenes, has been very helpful to me as well. And I wanted to thank you because oh. you know they they have watched either mine and gone to yours, or watched yours and gone to mine, and and it's uh, it's just been wonderful. So I appreciate that. Oh, also. good. Well, I'm I'm glad. It's it's nice when it works works out that way. And yeah, because you know, it's it's hard to figure out how people can can find them. Yeah. Oh, 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 totally. That so, YouTube, that's yeah. a, that's a great mystery. I'd like to yeah. know that answer. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm sure there's a lot of things I could be doing that would make it easier for people to find or more people would know about it, but there's only so many hours in the day. I was just going to say, <laughs> I was just going to say, yeah, I don't have that kind of time myself. I'm doing the yeah. best I can. Okay. Yeah. Well, thanks so much, Judy. Really appreciate it. I hope you have a wonderful holiday. Thank you. Um, you too. It's, yeah, it's just been really fun to have you on as Thank always. Thank you. Thanks for having me on again and letting me, letting me, you know, share my CD and pitch it and whatnot. And oh my gosh, talk total about holidays. <laughs> yeah. See, I, I have a tree up. This is I did. I saw thing. that. I saw Plug that. I it in it. and the lights come on. That's just, and I have my outdoor lights on because that's my contribution to the neighborhood. It's like, okay, I've decorated. Now I need to get the inside done. But oh yeah. <laughs> I had several yeah. neighbors text me and go, oh. Your lights look beautiful. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> well, you're ahead of me. We don't have one thing up yet. So yeah. I, I'm with you. I got to go get the tree. But yeah. all right. Thanks again. Okay. Take care. Thank <laughs> Thanks for coming. Please check out the other two interviews that I did with Judy. The first one is Judy goes through her career on the Waltons as well as her entire career. And then the second episode is fan questions that were sent in from all the Waltons fans to me. And Judy answers them all. So enjoy. Thanks.